Hi, I'm Rich Miller. I'm the editor of Data Center Knowledge. We're continuing to talk with folks at the Open uh, Compute Summit here in Santa Clara. And right now we're with uh, the Emerson team here at the Emerson Network Power Booth. Uh, why don't you guys introduce yourself and uh, tell us what you guys do. Oh, sure. I am David Gerhardt. I'm VP of Marketing for our new Hyperscale Solutions business. And I'm Eric Wilcox. I'm Vice President of Engineering and Operations for the Hyperscale business at Emerson. So, David, we'll start with you. Tell us about uh, the Hyperscale initiative that you guys have put together and announced today, uh, and what it involves and what should be doing. Yeah, so Emerson's been studying the market and has been a market leader in many aspects of the data center world for, for quite some time. And as we discovered a new uh, growing industry need in the hyperscale market, we decided to change our approach to the marketplace and put a dedicated team to address the very unique needs of hyperscale customers. As they start to build out megawatt class uh, facilities, it drives a different need in the value chain and how the vendor communities interact. I think the greatest example that you see that is the way Facebook is now sponsored the Open Compute Forum. That comes out of their need to drive a different infrastructure discussion with the vendor base. So Emerson has been trying to, uh, or we are, putting together the team to address those concerns and have a more thought leader to thought leader dialogue around the infrastructure elements that we're experts on. So it's much more than about much more than selling the box to them right. so, uh, that has a specific technology and helping them solve their business problem. Now, we'll always do it in the context of the technology and the infrastructure that we know, and that's the space that we operate in. But a company like Emerson has such a wide breadth of different technologies available to us. We have a great suite to bring to that discussion and apply the right technology for the right problem. Uh, so um, one of the things that, that's been going on with Open Compute is there's a lot of new hardware introduced, which includes not just servers and storage, but also the open rack and the rack level. You guys do have some equipment today. Maybe, Eric, you could tell us a, a little bit about what you've got here, how it relates to the open rack initiative, and, and how you're going to work with it. Sure. Clients. So the Open Rack Initiative uh, outlines a very specific uh, version 1.0 that's released to the public where you actually can see some of those on the floor today. We are building a 1.0 compliant rack, which is a shared infrastructure uh, with a power shelf, battery backup integrated, uh, a series of nine paired bus bars, and a, uh, a new open compute form factor that accepts the IT, be it server or storage, that incorporates the open U rather than the traditional rack U, mm -hmm. and a 21-inch wide frame rather than a 19-inch wide frame. Right. Okay, so we are off building that product, uh, actually capable of delivering 45 kilowatts of power in a single rack. Um, as you probably heard in the keynotes and talking to many of the customers, that type of density may not be utilized yet. There's going to be some, some lower versions of that. Um, but you can also integrate some battery backup, onboard battery backup. And we have some unique uh, solutions that we're bringing to market in the coming months that we'll be able to share soon. Now, in the interim, what not only Rackspace and other customers talked about this morning was the idea is to look at what Open Compute has put forward as a, a reference design. And many of the customers we're engaging with are taking portions of that that make great sense for what they're trying to accomplish in their data center. So what we have here is a, a rack that we uh, created for a customer that they did not necessarily want to adopt the RU or, or abandon the RU form factor and adopt the open U form factor, nor did they want to go to a 21 inch wide rack, they stayed 19. However, the portions of the open rack that they did want to incorporate is a single input AC feed okay. that powers a centralized rectifier and a 48 volt backup system. So we have 48 volt batteries in the rectifier system. Uh, we leverage some of the information from the version 1.0 rack. Uh, the customer that we're engaged with on this, while not compelled by the rack, you know, the transition from rack. Rack U to open U and 19 inch to 21 inch. They kept the same traditional form factor there, but the power architecture, um, where you bring in an AC uh, into an onboard centralized inverter, uh, creates a 48 volt backup system through a uh, battery backup shelf, which is the lower portion of the cabin, up through a DC PDU. So the server gets both AC and DC feeds. Okay, so single line feed, but availability and redundancy in your two power supplies that are fed into the server. Now one of the key things about making this function right is servers tradi traditionally in their two power supplies will 50-50 load share, but the concept here is to have your AC be your primary contributor, and only in the event of a power supply failure will the 48 volt 
contribute, or if you lose your AC, the battery backup will have enough content to hold this up for one minute while you either work, virtualize off your workload or destage and, and gracefully shut down your systems. So one of the things that keeps this cost effective and uh, easier to deploy is that inverter is only sized, not for the full 10 kilowatt capacity of the rack. This rectifier actually uh, is sized for four kilowatts, which is enough to run the switches, uh, cover four to six filling uh, power supplies within a server, and charge the battery for that shutdown period.